hi and welcome to the A to Z of Sex, the bonus video for part F. This is basically just focusing it on festivals, as I discussed in the earlier video. These bonus videos are about exploring the historical and cultural backgrounds of the terms used in the A to Z of Sex, so it might not be as funny, but I hope you find it just as interesting and entertaining. Now, as I said, this is about festivals, and as I said in the first A to Z of Sex, which I will link, Hyok's modern day holidays are actually based around previous festivals that were had in the old days. In these festivals people were permitted to explore other sexual possibilities, for example homosexuality, cross-dressing, uh, switching partners and things like that, and exploring the sexual taboo that was suppressed if you will. This was because people in those days believed that if there was too much sexual or negative energy built up then it would come out in a much more violent and vicious way so they had an idea to have certain festivals to just let it come out. So I'm just going to give you a few examples of these festivals. Now the first festival is called Aphrodite, the day of blood. Now as some of you may know, Aphrodite was a Greek goddess of love but she was also a hermaphrodite. She was also a virgin mother who bore a son Attis who held a pomegranate in between her breasts. Attis was then castrated and proved fatal and so then died. This is why some seasons are symbolic. So we rebirth in the spring, die in the winter and things like that. Each winter worshippers of Aphrodite would mourn the death of Attis by abstaining from sex and fasting. And in the spring, the day of blood would commence with cutting down a palm tree, which was then decorated and wrapped around cloths to symbolise a dead body, Attis. After the festivities of one day, the next day people were actually allowed to go out in the street in disguises and do whatever they wanted with whoever they wanted. And the festival ended with the palm tree being taken down. Baal was one of the earlier gods. He also died in the winter and resurrected himself in the spring. And now this festival was mainly for women in which they would fast and shave their head and abstain from sex in the, in the winter. And in the spring, they would just have sex with anyone they wanted. Now this was particularly unusual because it was women and they, they were taught from an early age not to be promiscuous unless it was this particular festival. Now women that didn't shave their head, now they were actually used as sex slaves. Dionysia. This was a festival in honour of Dionysius, who was the god of wine, which... To me, I, I would worship a god of wine. This festival was actually banned in 186 BC because it actually got too violent with all the promiscuity and the sex that was going on, which I found really, really interesting. Now, May Day is a festival that is still celebrated here in England, and I'm not sure what it is in any other way, but it's basically the first week in May people will celebrate and dance around a maypole, which in the older times would symbolise a penis. Nowadays, it's just mainly for dancing and singing and getting drunk like every other festival. But back then, it was to celebrate um, fertility and the penis and things like that. Uh -huh. There are other festivals that are connected with this, for instance, Murloc, Carnival and Saturnalia. But I feel in my made of this video a little bit too long, so if you want to know about those, I will answer any emails that you give me about it, but to be honest, it's just the same as all the other festivals where just you celebrate, you celebrate celebrate sex, you celebrate fertility and it's all glorious, people get drunk and have sex and stuff and things like that. So that's all from me, see you later guys.